take um the plot eight um bears of Bastoria. Today we have done the process to it. And we will find the Seletoma. This must be the warg forest. We need to be careful. There may well be exorcists around. This is a dual-layered barrier. It's the Abbey's new invention. So it's two barriers working in tandem, then. That sure sounds like a hell of a lot yep. of trouble just to stop yeah. people from coming in. It really does. Reaper's curse of yours is consistent, if nothing else. The curse even affects coin flips? Seems that way. A Moloch's powers affect physical objects and can, at times, even synchronize with their wavelengths. And in your case, it's that coin? Yeah. Yep. That's why it always comes up tails. You must forgive my skepticism. Whether you choose to believe it or not is really up to you. It's okay. It might be and, uh, worth noting that coin is also Aizen's vessel. So is that wavelength business the reason why Lafayette always has that compass around him? That's part of it, but in yeah. another sense, it's a kind yeah, of proof boy. of his manhood. Proof of his manhood? Must polish you so you don't rust. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. What? For a praetor, you really don't know that much about the world, do you? No, yeah. Huh. So what does this Solitoma flower look like exactly? In a word, ugly. Purple. The flower itself is purple with leaves and stem of maroon. An ugly flower. All right, I'll keep an eye out. Okay. Time to dish up, thank you. Ah!
that we're finished here. Those purple leaves belong to a Salatoma. Be on the lookout for the ugly flowers. Ugly purple flowers. Got it.
は
No. You there! What do you think you're doing here? We could ask the same of you. Yeah, I Is something going on back there? They didn't look like they were demon hunting. Oh Are you making that move? No, it just did it by itself. He's in sync with his compass, just like Aizen and his coin. Aizen, you're an Earth Moloch, right? Do you sense anything around here? No, I don't. It seems Lafayette's senses are sharper than mine. It stopped, but something still feels wrong. Like what? It kind of feels like when we. So a force similar to Inominat's power. I'm starting to think this may be no ordinary demon we're dealing with here. I don't know. I don't know.
of its demon hand. It's such a mysterious weapon. I can only imagine how much of a threat it will become to the Abbey. This calls for a clear-headed breakdown of everything I know about it so far. It changes shape in a flash, and could devour most anything. How must that feel, to devour something with your hand like that? Hmm. But it doesn't devour the bandages that cover it up. Maybe they're protected with some sort of special art? Likewise, the rest of her outfit can't be ignored. One would think she wouldn't want to wear such ragged clothing. Yet, hmm. she clearly has no inclination of buying something new. I suppose that could be taken to mean she has some sort of attachment to it. But that top is really big for her. Like it was made for a man! Maybe she wears that outfit in memory of someone important to her. I'd better not touch it then. Hmm. I know I may not look it, but I really am good at sewing. Maybe I should suggest <laughs> mending her clothes rather than outright replacing them. <laughs> On the other hand, that fabric looks like it would be hard to push a needle through. I could be in over my head. <laughs> but the tougher the fight, the more I get fired up! Of course, Lord Artorius would probably scold me if he heard me talking like that. Who'd scold you for what now? Oh, uh, well, I was thinking about sewing! I mean, your clothes, they're all beat up, and I thought that if I offered to mend them for you, you'd probably scold me, wouldn't you? You'd mend my clothes? Have they been worrying you that much? I mean, not like constantly or anything. It just crosses my mind from time to time. Are you good at it? Yes. I'm told I come across as awkward sometimes, but if nothing else, I'm good with my hands. I see. All right. If I ever need it done, I'll come to you. Good. Just leave it to me. Are you feeling all right? You're really sweating. The heat and the cold doesn't bother me at all. But you're a human, so you need to take care of yourself. Huh. And if you keep soaking in your own sweat, you'll catch a cold. Besides, I don't imagine it feels that great. You should keep washing and bathing on your own schedule. Like however you did before falling in with us. Just let me know and I'll make it work. Because the guys aren't considerate enough to stop and ask you if you need to. Huh. Sure. Alright. Thanks. That was a surprisingly normal thing for her to say. I probably shouldn't bother with her clothes for now. We girls have to be considerate of each other. Looks like a dead end up ahead. Luffy said, do you feel anything here? No, not right now. Ah, uh, look! Purple flowers! Yep, Salatoma. Is the demon the real reason the Abbey's closed off the forest? Worry about it later. It's flower picking time. Agreed. What do you think, kiddo? I told you these things were hard on the eyes. I mean, who puts those colors together? Yeah, they're really nasty looking. But if they help the others, that's good enough for me. <gasps> what is that? that? This must be the demon we were warned about. Are you all right? I'm okay. So much for this demon being hard to find. Is this the Reaper's curse yet again? We're just getting started. <laughs> Another barrier! That barrier... Even my Praetor Hearts can't break that. What's going on here? Why go to such lengths to keep this demon alive? Either way... I don't think we're hauling how many flowers unless we beat up Mr. Bugglesworth here. Right! Everyone, let's do this! This thing is so cool! I want to be a bug! Stop fantasy! 
exercise him and help us get rid of it. than I thought. Uh -oh. Look! Can we keep him? No. no. Hand it over. I'll dispose of it. The Abbey had some reason for protecting it. Maybe we should keep it alive for observation. <sighs> you want it, you feed it. Anyway, now that we've got these flowers, Eleanor and my crew ought to be out of danger. Hey! Forgetting somebody? It looks like we've closed the door on this little episode. That insect demon was a bit of a surprise, but I still think this curse business is overblown. <sighs> I can count on one hand how many have survived more than three years at my side. If you're not careful, you might wind up as corpse number 50. 50? That's how many comrades I've lost. Oh my oh, god. I... I'm sorry. Just saying, don't let your guard down. Right. Now that we've got what we need, we should get back to the ship. Hmm. 
I wonder what they call this kind of bug. You're way into that thing, aren't you? Laffy said, can I ask you a bit of an awkward question? What? What kind of demon would you say Velvet is? Uh, well... Oh, don't worry. I'm not trying to find a vulnerability or anything. I'm only asking out of curiosity. It's not that I doubt you, Eleanor. I just don't know much about her myself. You fought against her, haven't you? She consumes her enemies with her left hand and claims their power. She's a demon like absolutely no other. Plonk just about any demon down in front of her and I bet she could devour it in a single gulp. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty much true. Sometimes demons that she doesn't entirely devour turn human again, but... What? You've seen demons turn back into humans? Is it that big of a deal? Of course it is! Everyone knows that once you catch demon blight, that's it. There's no turning back. Although, I did see it happen with the High Priest Gideon. I wonder if there's some kind of connection. Not that it matters if he turned back. Demon or not, he's dead either way. Whatever it is, it's of no concern to a pirate. If I were you, I wouldn't worry about what's normal. <laughs> if things were normal, we wouldn't have found each other. You have a point. Sorry I couldn't help, Eleanor. No, you didn't do anything wrong. But I need to keep digging until I find out more about the kind of demon Velvet is. Incredible! A new species is usually named after the person who discovered it. The Lafayette rhinoceros beetle, then? Rhinoceros beetle? Whoa, now, that's a stag beetle if I ever saw one. No, those things may look like pincers, but they're actually horns. A three-horned beetle will cause quite a stir in the bug community. Hey, I know hmm. pincers when I see them, and those were some mighty pincers. The Lafayette stag beetle has a better ring to it, right? What part of that sounds better? The whole thing. Stag beetles are the strongest, after all. I can't let that go unchallenged. The rhinoceros is the king of beetledom. <laughs> beetledom? More like beetle dumb. Huh? That doesn't help your case at all. Rokuro. Aizen. I... I feel a dangerous storm brewing. The rhino is a one-trick pony with its horn, but a stag can cut its opponents in half. Its weapons can be used in any situation. The stag is a true swordsman. That's petty trickery. The only beetle with the raw muscle to decide its own fate is the rhino. But they only live for a year. The stag can survive through the winter. They live hard and die young. Is the beauty of such a life lost on you? Why is it that boys get so excited when they talk about bugs? Rhinoceros, stag, or butterfly? It's all no matter to me. They all look like cockroaches. They're totally different! So, what will you name it? Um... I think... Rhino Stagros, for now. So sweet, like raspberries. Let me smell. <laughs> oh, they smell tasty. Do they really taste that bad? They lure you in with their scent. 
But once that flower hits your tongue, its flavor transforms into something dreadful. Dreadful, dreadful like, like how? how? The petals melt into a liquid thousands of times stronger than mint, and the leaves and stem taste richer than the richest beef tongue. The two flavors clash and fizz on your tongue, and your whole body is racked with choking pain. What? Seriously? <laughs> That's what Ifri told me anyway. Huh. It's actually true. Huh. That's exactly what it's like. You've tasted it before, haven't you? Is there any way around it? You can squeeze it, boil it, mix it with honey, but nothing gets rid of the taste. Trying to mix it or sweeten it makes it even harder for some to swallow. Have you taken yours? No, I'll do it once I'm back on the ship with the pirates. Wait, are you the type that puts off on pleasant tasks? <laughs> Not at all. I simply cannot be the first to drink it when others are still waiting for us to deliver their doses. You do know that you'll have to drink double the dose after you start displaying the symptoms, right? Are you certain? Quit being so stubborn. It'd be better if you just got it over with. And you've taken your dose? No, I don't need to. Having a tethered Moloch drink it is enough to absorb its effects. But to a Moloch, it tastes... Yes, the cuter you are, the worse it tastes. <laughs> it's good to be an exorcist, eh, Eleanor? Do I have to drink it? Uh, of course not. I'll suffer through my own dose of Salatoma. Well, Pooh, how dull. Whew. Do you think there's any chance that wanted Moloch would launch an attack Lord. here? His target's probably Loringen, but stay sharp just in case. He might try to break open the bug cage as a diversion. Wanted Moloch? Loringen? Hmm. First that demon wrecks Helavis, and then Eleanor betrays us? We're never gonna catch a break. Quit whining. Cleaning up messes is our job. Looks like our Abbey buddies are up to something. And the bug cage. That barrier, I assume? If so, it won't be long before they find out we broke in. Then we should make our exit while we can. Yeah, we... Time to spar today. Got a date lined up. That artifact you've got belongs to Ifrid. Why do you have it? Just picked it up off the ground somewhere. Don't screw with me, tough guy. I have ways of making you talk. 
Ha! I wonder how much pain gets you to open up. You're the one about to be tested. It's not up to you how this goes. If I want to talk, we'll talk. And if I want to fight, we'll fight. What are you? I'd play more, but I don't want to keep old Pointybeard waiting. We'll chat some more later, with our fists. Wait! Aizen! We need to get the flowers to everyone on the ship! You can handle it! But you're... <sighs> Let's head back, Luffy said. All right. Zavid was holding? What do you think that was? From the sound of it, it seemed to belong to Eifried. I've never seen any object or art quite know. like it. Maybe it's that relic Eifried brought back from a continent across the sea. An art from another continent. Do you think Aizen will be alright? That Moloch seemed to know what he was doing. I'd rather we just stayed out of his way, but... First the throne, and now here. What is Zavid after, anyway? He was probably just making up that date business. But still, old pointy beard? Just like Eifried. When I was talking with Benwick, he said Eifried had a pointy beard. You don't say. Then I bet Zavid is that wanted Moloch the Abbey's looking for. Yeah. He must be aware they're after him. And then he baited Aizen into following him, using something that belonged to Eifried. And I'm pretty sure Aizen knew that, but he went after him all the same. Ugh, this can only go well, I'm sure. Is Aizen in trouble? It doesn't matter either way, if his Corsair Scourge goes untreated. For now, let's get back to the ship. Back your solitomas. Drink up. You've saved us. But where's the first mate? We bumped into some wannabe tough guy Moloch, and he just took off after him. What? That must have been Zavid. Why didn't you guys follow him? And leave you all with the Corsair Scourge? Yes. Aizen's the one in danger here. Is it because the Abbey is after Zavid? So you even knew about it. I heard the details from a merchant who deals with the Abbey. Some big shot exorcist named Melchior has set up a trap for Zavid and Loringen. If Aizen gets caught up in that, he might not make it out alive. So now there's Melchior to worry about. Why is Lord Melchior assuming direct command to capture Zavid? Wait, that's not important. What matters is I can turn Lafayette's head over to him and finally return to the Abbey. Melchior is a legate, a powerful enemy. Trap or no? Ugh, you guys are useless! Well, fine. If you're not going to go help him, we will. What makes you think you're capable of being any help? Would you let an ally get slaughtered just because you were scared? What? We want to save him. Maybe we'll lose. It still won't stop us. We are the ones who decide our fates. Only us. That's just the creed of Eifried's pirates. You're a real hothead, you know that? 
Nobody said anything about not helping Aizen. Huh? You all stay here. Take your medicine like good little boys. And be ready to welcome back your first mate and captain. The captain? Why else would Aizen knowingly barge into a trap, if not to save Eifried? Oh, of course! Leave the ship and crew to me. Here. This one's for you. <laughs> Those pirates haven't a lick of sense in them. They don't let reason dictate who they protect. <sighs> if you say so, demon. Now, about where Aizen's headed. Those exorcists were talking about some place called Loringen. Yes. It's a tower in the northern part of Westgand where the exorcist train. Lines up with what Benwick told us. That must be the place. There must be a lot of exorcists. Hang in there, Aizen. That'll take more than basic exorcists to do him in. We ought to pity any poor exorcists who meet the Reaper. Right! Let's work together and find him! Yeah. We will find Aizen. Alright. Today we're going to go on doing, doing, doing. I don't know. Here Oh, Toma, this is awful as I remember. I'd hoped I'd never have to drink it again. Are you all right, Eleanor? Is this your second experience with the Corsair Scourge? No, I had it for a different reason. In the Abbey, it's tradition for initiates to drink Solitoma as part of their welcoming festivities. Sounds like hazing to me. When everyone shares the same experience, drinking something so shockingly revolting, our bonds are strengthened. It's a good thing. If you say so. <laughs> I really did believe I'd never have to taste it again. To be blunt, I hate it. You're lucky you think it tastes so terrible. That means you also know what tastes good. Right, Velvet? What does that mean? Velvet can't taste anything aside from blood. What? Is that because she's a demon? I'm aware of one other flavor. Mogulu, here's your dose of Solitoma. No! Get back here! Don't! Keep that salad thing away from me! I see the sweet taste of another suffering. Tower lies beyond the Burnak Plateau. Blah! If you're gonna set up an obvious trap, couldn't it at least be someplace more convenient?
What's wrong, Lafayette? I was just wondering why Aizen and Zavid can't work together to find Eifried. All men their age care about is their reputation, their street cred. Such a hassle. Oh, really? Well, I can't fully deny it. <sighs> the same could be said of women, and of everyone, really. It's hard to work alongside someone unless you strive to understand their thoughts and feelings. And if you can't? Well, um... It's like Zavid said. You start talking with your fists instead. Sounds harder than I thought. Um... Good. won't be happy in the morning, but they're alive. Is this your work? No. They were like this when I got here. It must have been Zavid. He didn't kill a single one. Interesting. The Abbey is going to great lengths to arrest him. Even so, he clearly knows he's walking into a trap. What I don't get is why he roped me into all of this. If he didn't want my help, then what need did he have to play the Eifried card on me? If you knew this was a trap, why did you come? To see for myself. When I met Eifried, I was wallowing in despair that I would ever find a way to break the Reaper's curse. Stop denying reality, he told me. If you were really born with that curse, then it's a part of you. But if the Reaper learns to grasp the wheel of his life, even he may find his creed, his path through stormy waters. And so, I joined him aboard the Von Eltia. A creed of life. Let's say someone's murdered the captain. If it came as the result of him living life on his terms, I could accept that. But if anyone, and I mean anyone, tries to crush his way of life, I could never forgive them. Who's there? It's rude to eavesdrop. If you got secrets, talk about them at home. Zavid, isn't there any way you and Aizen can work together somehow? Not if he's going to keep acting like this. <laughs> well, that's how it is. What was the point of all that posturing? He could have just stayed hidden. Weirdo. Can't disagree there. I don't get it. Get what? Why did Eifried let Aizen join his ship, knowing he carried the Reaper's curse with him? What good did it do? I just don't see the reason behind it. Well, if it were me who had that curse, it would mean that you and Velvet could die because of it, right? Yeah, I suppose so. If that's the case, then I'd feel like I'd both want to and not want to be close to you two. And... I'd probably really, really hate myself for it. Do you suppose that's how Aizen feels? But Eifried still took him in. He agreed they put up with the curse together. It's all a bit hard to fathom. Well, if one thing's for certain, it sounds like Eifried's a very strong man. At least for a base lawless pirate. You better be ready.
hard? It's necessary, so no, I don't think so. Hmm. Classic honor roll, student. Everyone ready to play? to Ifrit, didn't it? I've read much of the Abbey's archives and weaponry, but I've never seen anything like it. He found it when we crossed to the far continent. It's a relic from a long-vanished civilization. He's like me and can't resist a good treasure. But of everything we've found, that one was his most prized. What is it? I can't say. It seemed like a weapon, but Ifrit wouldn't let anyone touch it. He went off and tested it on his own. Then came back all grinning, saying he had an ace up his sleeve the next time we got into a fight. Then it's definitely some sort of ancient combat device? But why is Savid looking for Ifrid? To apologize for stealing it? He doesn't seem like that much of a gentleman. Did he really steal it? What do you mean? It's just my feeling, but... Savid doesn't seem like the type of Moloch to steal something so precious. He said he just picked it up. Perhaps he's trying to return it. Perhaps. Perhaps not. No, okay. not bothering to hide this trap they probably knew we'd sense it the question now is just what they're planning to spring on us I don't know but you tell me you tell me bad bad hello hello Loading in the door. When and how did Ifri disappear exactly? And how did you two meet in the first place? You know, you ask an awful lot of questions about us. What? I don't mean to pry, really. Perhaps it's 
a habit I picked up from my work. Drat. It seems I've been digging too hard. No matter. Eifried vanished about a year ago. <sighs> he agreed to fight a duel against someone, and secretly left to meet his opponent. Once we figured out what was happening, we rushed to the scene. Yeah, boy. But all we found was the aftermath of a fight. Well, I was like, no. Was Zavid his opponent? Given his yeah, choice of no, weapon no, and his no, ability no, to fight, no. I'd say it's likely. What I don't get is why Eifried would end up captured and imprisoned Make by the Abbey all. after a fight with a stray Moloch. Melky Prisoner? On their island. Until an exorcist named Melchior took him away, that is. What? Lord Melchior did? The Abbey would have captured Eifried yeah, about boy. a year ago. Surely it must have caused quite a stir. Yeah, boy. I, I was simply patrolling. I wasn't involved in any such operations. Oh. But I do remember that we suffered a great number of casualties around that time. I never yeah, heard why. And when I went to investigate, yeah, why? I found no records of any major deployment. Why? 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 He wanted to hide something clearly, and I think I'm starting to get a picture why? of the no, Why? Why? No, 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 why? Hello, no, no, no. Hello, Saffron. Hello, Hello, no. Hello, I think one bird, hard bird. Time for Eleanor. Yeah. Very funny, huh? Eifried. So, this is Von Eifried. Eisen, it's good to see you again. So you're alive. You could have sent a letter. <laughs> when have you ever written a letter to another man? <laughs> True. Aside from my little brother, not even once. Your brother? Ah, yes. You told me that once. Eisen, why? I've got no brother. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, what? Enough of your tricks. <laughs> Enough. Oh my god. Oh my god, Enough. <laughs> Thanks for luring them out. I owe you one. Zavid. Now come on out, you old coot! Milk you are. Breaking through my double illusion. Impressive. You impressive. I make it a point not to fall for the same tricks twice. I shouldn't have let you get away last time. I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> what? Why am I here? Her consciousness has returned, so that is its power. Chain reaction. Your Reaper's curse is quite a dreadful affliction, isn't it? Don't you run away! Heads up! Wyvern's coming! Help on your foot, then. Why would an exorcist create a demon? Hey, worry about that later. We got damn dragons to take care of. Slice them! Air thrust! Tremble! Blast them! 
moving me. Looks like you got caught in your own trap, old man. Oh, are you sure about that? I'll take care of the last one. He just saved the wyvern? You folks jump in and kill without a second thought! Is that your creed? Marvelous. Your Siegfried is just the power I've been looking for. Siegfried. What? My work here is done. The hell did you do? Wait, damn you! Follow them! Where the hell did they go? Find them. They can't have gotten far. Sure got some speedy legs for an old fart. I'm glad to see you're okay, Zavid. It's not me that I'm worried about. Melchior was highly interested in your weapon. And yet he didn't steal it. Surely a legget like him could snatch it if he wanted to. Why bother stealing it? When you can just copy its hidden formula. Some arts can decipher the workings of other arts in a split second. And guess what Melchior's specialty is? As he left, he said, My work here is done. The Abbey must have some use for that unknown art. Who knows what? After all, they brought it here from another continent. Yeah, boy. <laughs> and we'll find out what they're after and crush it to dust. <laughs> Let yeah. me ask you just one question. Why do you have Siegfried? I'm counting on you, he said. Back when I served the Exorcists, they sent me on a mission to capture Eifried. Savid, you were once their slave? Yeah. My mind was under the influence of Inominat's domain. But when Eifried aimed this baby at me, one shot was all it took to open my eyes. The fight we had after that was one for the books. <laughs> he might have been a human, but that guy was a beast. Put a song in my soul. But then Melchior had to jump in and spirit Eifried away with one of his damned illusions. That old bastard! Playing tricks with people's minds. But why'd he grab Eifried and not Siegfried when he had the chance? He probably didn't know at the time that this guy was the real prize he was after. But Eifried knew. Right before he was taken, he distracted Melchior long enough to hand Siegfried over to me. <sighs> well, that's all I know. Whether you believe me or not, is up to you. Got it. We're done here. Huh? That was easy. Eifried only says I'm counting on you to people he trusts. Is that so? So, what are you gonna do now? Gonna keep looking for Eifried. So gotta give this back and settle our score. I doubt you have much time huh. left to get that done. Yeah. I'd hazard a guess that until now, Melchior Amazing. was unaware what Siegfried could really do. Amazing! In other words, he and the exorcists weren't able to interrogate anything out of their captive. And now that Eifried's no longer needed, I see no reason for them to keep him alive. You 
think I don't know that? If you really want to save Eifried, you probably ought to team up with us. Nope. No can do. Why not? You lot will do anything to achieve your goals. Even kill. <gasps> Sorry, I'm a fighter, not a killer. I won't steal a single life. True that. That's just my creed. And I've got no intention of changing our pirate creed either. Aizen and Zavid have their own creeds. They both have such strong principles, yep. even though they're so different. Just like humans. Yep. Yep. But I'm gonna play on. I'm gonna play on. I'm gonna play more than I would. I'm gonna play more than I would. I thought I smelled someone pondering. What's on your mind, Laffy said? I know Siegfried comes from another continent and all. But do you know anything else about it, Roboro? Nope, can't say I do. All I care about are swords. That contraption doesn't interest me much. I suppose that makes huh. sense. But it looked real powerful. Just guessing based on how we saw Zavid use it, I'd say it amplifies his power somehow. An amplifier. It's true that he seemed to get stronger when he fired it at himself. Yeah, and it gave that dying legendary wyvern enough strength to escape. But wasn't it also what he used to dispel Melchior's illusions back there? That was also amplification. The Malachim are the source of his arts. The relic pushed them past their limits and... kablooey. Suffice it to say, it can be used both offensively and defensively. It must be very hard to master. More important is what the Abbey plans to do with it. Not that I yeah, really care. Boy. So where is the oh. Why can they why?
Thank you. This big storm came and swept me out to a class 4 island. And let me tell you, it's as bad as the rumors make it sound. I wanted to just wait it out in a shipyard somewhere, but then the water turned all gooey. Then I had these jellyfish things coming onto the deck, and before I knew it, slugs were swimming around in the damn ocean. Wouldn't the salt in seawater mess up a slug? Yeah, that's what I thought too, but these weren't no sea slugs neither. Scary. Tell you that much. You want my advice? Stay the hell away from that island huh. altogether. But nah. if you do go, nah. watch out for that gooey stuff. Nah. What did that pirate mean by class four? I've never heard of that. It's a classification the Abbey uses to help inform nah. their strategy. An estimation of how well they've nah, been able to boy, manage the I'm going there. area. I'm Administrative going. zone classes one through three have been assigned a suitable contingent of exorcists to guarantee the population's safety. I'm going so, there. Yeah, well. Class 4 administrative zones are ones that are still unsafe? In a perfect world, the entire kingdom would be protected, but there's just not enough manpower to go around. The Abbey doesn't send exorcists to remote areas in far-off islands. Instead, they avoid casualties by making those areas off-limits. But that pirate mentioned he'd come close to an island. Are those policies actually enforced? They send out an official notice to stay away, and that's all. It's not like they could blockade every tiny remote island out there. So you're free to dive into the deep end if you want, but no one will come to your rescue. Hope you know how Boy. to swim. If they could keep the demons in check, they wouldn't have to tell people to stay clear. Frankly, yeah, I think well, the Abbey just doesn't want to go near places like that. In other words, these are dangerous places that the Abbey has washed their hands of. Yeah. Makes you wonder how much they can administrate these places when they're not willing to get their hands dirty. Are there many Class 4 administrative zones? I've heard of 10 such regions in my time working as an inspector for the Abbey. But I'm afraid I couldn't tell you their exact locations or their current status. If the Abbey abandoned this island, it's probably safe to assume that it's getting to be pretty dangerous. If we go there, we're gonna want to be prepared. Take a look at this. This recipe looks real tasty. <laughs> 
Scout ship setting. You sure you want me for this? First mate, you're all right. Sorry to worry you. And the captain? Yeah, boy. It turned out to be a fake. But now I know the real one's still alive somewhere. Well, of course he is. Not that he has a lot of time left. <laughs> what do you mean? Calm down. I'll explain later. Eisen! E you stay calm too, okay? <laughs> and you've all taken your salatoma? Yes, sir! And nobody died? All still kicking. Compared to your curse, sir, the sickness was tiny potatoes. Huh. All right. Then let's get ready to sail out. Already done, sir. We're ready whenever. Good job. <laughs> Good job. The Pirate's Creed, huh? huh? There's worse out there. Good job. Good job. Let's go to Jod. Oh, no. It's too bad that wasn't the real eye freed. But I'm glad everyone on the ship is feeling better. Yeah. Though it sounds like they never want to touch that Salatoma stuff ever again. <laughs> what about Eleanor? She took it too, and her face went all... Wah! I don't mean how she looked. <laughs> I mean how she actually feels. Oh! Well, she looks like she feels better too. Good. You're worried about her, aren't you, Velvet? No. It's nothing like that. Let me tell you something, kiddo. When young maidens ripen, they have trouble expressing their feelings. So Velvet's... ripen? Mogilu! Quit giving Loppy set confusing thoughts! <laughs> no trouble expressing those feelings, I see. What? The Abbey is supposed to exist to bring peace and order to the world. Everything the Abbey does, everything Lord Melchior and Shepherd Artorius do, it ought to be rooted in that mission. Mm. And yet, something nah. just doesn't feel right here. Nah, nah bow into one of the other one. That knowledge is not for you. Uh. Something wrong? Whoa! Easy there. Just asking. S sorry I, I was just deep in thought. 
Is there something you need from me? Nah, just heard a bunch of sighs and wondered if you were feeling sick or anything. No, I drank my Salatoma juice. Ah, tasted like crap, didn't it? It... it wasn't that bad. Hey. What? Are you afraid of demons? No, I, I am not. It's more like I despise them. Ten years ago, a group of them attacked my village. They destroyed everything. And everyone. Including your family? Yes. The only family I had at that point was my mother. And in all the chaos, she... All I have left of her is this hand mirror she gave me. I didn't want anyone else to have to feel the way I did. And so, I became an exorcist in order to destroy demons. Mm. So you can keep your pity. Gotcha. I will then. That's called a pangyon, a type of bird native to this area. Pangyon. Their meat is succulent and tender, and makes a lovely stew. Wow, what's it taste like? You'd eat that poor thing? Savage. You're one to talk, demon. <laughs> it was one of my mother's specialties. All right, enough of the chit-chat. Magilu, what's this grimoire friend of yours like? Hmm, well, how do I put it? <sighs> <sighs> oh. <laughs> you know, like that. Like what? <laughs> <sighs> well, to put it in a way those of meager imagination can understand, Grim's got a sort of listless, aristocratic air about her. A noble woman in her twilight, you could say. Huh. So you mean, like, a woman, but different from Velvet and Eleanor. <laughs> You're not wrong there. I tell you what, just keep an eye out for a grown woman. Uh, <laughs> grown woman. Okay, I got it. Well, since we got her name, we could start by asking around. Exactly. Now you're talking. <sighs> What's up, kiddo? Moggy Lou, you're a grown woman yourself. So why is it you have trouble clearly expressing your real feelings? Good question. Put simply, a long time ago, mine broke. Bye-bye! Your feelings broke? Come on. Let's question the townsfolk. Hey guys, I was thinking on... the next episode. Okay, why? Yeah, why? Why?